Hello everyone, it's Mari here for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. I have episode number 21 of Try Trendy and True for you today. I'm going to be creating a 12 by 12 project. I'm going to be using some Evergreen and Holly from Vicki Booten, as well as this gorgeous cut file from The Cut Shop to create a layout highlighting some top stories from 2022. I'm going to remove the branding strip off of this paper here that you can see. This is a gorgeous paper. I love that it's just really nice and subtle but it's just and it's just perfect for my background. I'm going to be putting the um, cut file over to the left and then my photos to the right. I'm going to use this gorgeous green diagonal stripe paper as a frame around the other paper that I showed earlier. I'm going to just take that branding strip off of this paper and I'm also going to take the center out of this piece because I'm actually going to just use um, the edges of it for a frame so I wanted to retain the center of this paper and save it for another project so what I'm doing here is you can just see I'm putting it into my trimmer and I'm just trimming it so that I'm taking the center out of it and leaving about an inch um, outside of that center circle as a frame for the other pattern paper that I'm going to be using. So you can just see I'm just lifting my trimmer so that it uh, obviously isn't cutting right up to the edge of the paper and just trimming out in that center section. And then, like I said, I can just set this a centerpiece aside and use it for another project. It's a really great way to um, make the most out of your patterned paper when you want to use a piece for a frame for your project. Now what I'm going to do with this first piece of paper that I showed you is I'm just going to take off half an inch on each side and what that's going to do is size that paper down to 11 inches square and now I can just adhere that onto that green diagonal paper and just create a frame for my project in that way. Now here you can see that gorgeous cut file from the cut shop on my paper and what I wanted to do is just kind of like lay down my photos so that I could have an idea of how I wanted to place them. These photos are printed at 2.5 inches square and I wanted to just kind of bounce them down the page from top to bottom and just leave enough room for some simple journaling for each one of these different photos. So I'm just going to kind of play around with these. Um, once I'm happy with the placement and how things are looking, I will start to adhere things down for my project. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I did was I just took my liquid adhesive and added it to the back of this cut file. Now the cut file was cut using my Silhouette uh, Cameo. I cut this from some white cardstock and you can just see here that I am just using that liquid adhesive to adhere this down. I'm just going to make sure that that's straight. I wanted to leave a little bit of margin over to the left from the edge of that pattern paper that's the base of my layout here and you can see that there's obviously a wider mar margin above and below that just kind of centering it in that area. Now I did also cut the cut file from some of Vicky's patterned paper as well and what that's going to do is give me all of these different pieces that I can use inside of this outline of the cut file. I love that. I think what it does is it just adds really nice color to that left side of the layout. It highlights this really large bold title and yet I still have that nice white outline for that title. I'm going to add these pieces back into the cut file with some foam adhesive and that's going to add just some really nice dimension to this pattern paper. So what I'll do is I'll just take some foam squares and add those pieces those little bits of foam to the backs of each one of these letters and then I'll take the release paper off and add those into that open space and I'll do that for absolutely every one of these pieces of pattern paper from the cut file. I'm not going to show you all of this it's just the same thing over and over again but I just wanted to show you a little bit of this process so that you can see what I did. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see the dimension on the video but if you go over to the blog post for this project you'll be able to see a couple of close-up pictures or one for one for sure I believe and you'll be able to see hopefully there um, just some of the dimension that this adds to the project. I really like doing this with a cut file. Uh, first of all cut files are fantastic for titles or adding your theme into your project creating 
an element that just, you know, really adds some nice, beautiful detail to your project. And I just really love adding some foam adhesive into the open space just because I feel like it... Um, it adds that element of dimension in, in here. So you can just see me here taking the release paper off. I'm going to pop the letter S into that space. And then here we'll have a transition and you'll be able to see that when it's all finished and how cool that looks. So now I have this really great, um, you know, placement of my photos, I think. Uh, the top photo is straight, the bottom photo is straight. Then I have these three kind of wonky photos in the center. Now what I want to do is take this piece of ephemera from Vicky's Collections and just add this in. It's a little swoopy banner. Um, it's stars, which I love, and it also is in the colors of the collection, which I've used in my other areas where I have pattern paper. It looks great. It doesn't take away from the uh, cut file at all. You can still read it, but it just adds a little bit more detail to the cut file area. I think it's really sweet. And I love that that star theme is also continued in the center of the number zero uh, in the number 2022. So I really like that. I think that looks good. And I'm just taking, taking a look before I adhere this uh, base onto the frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over and add some adhesive just around all of the edges of the perimeter since that is where I want this to stick onto that frame. Um, I'm never really worried about the back of the layout not looking neat when I got the paper as I did for this one to create this frame because when I put this into my album I will put another layout on the back side of it so that the backs of the layouts are facing each other. You'll never see the back of this layout when it's in the album and so I always just think it's the best choice to gut the paper when I remember to do that. So I think it's just a really great way to conserve paper. So I love how that looks. I do apologize. I'm kind of zoomed in a little bit too much for you to really be able to see that whole thing, but hopefully you can appreciate how nice that frame looks on the project. Now, what I did for my journaling is I used some punches from my stash. I punched out some white and green cardstock in different sizes, and I did my journaling on the white cardstock. I put one of the stickers from Vicky's collection with foam adhesive in the center just to number each of the different photos. And I adhered the white circle with foam adhesive onto the green. So I used a two inch punch, a one and three quarter inch punch, and a one and a half inch punch for this process. And yeah, so it just worked out really well. You can just see the, the four different little bits of journaling. I just added my journaling in a circle around the edge of those circles. I just thought it looked really cool that way. I didn't need a ton of journaling, just enough to kind of like remind myself of what was happening in these photos. So the, the four big stories of the year, the first one at the top is the birth of my grandson. That's a photo of my son. So he's photoed, has a photo there with his little nephew. And then my son uh, added a little puppy to our family this year as well, a sweet little corgi named Roz. We also built our cottage this year, which was a huge undertaking, probably the biggest story of the year. And I love that one photo. It shows the guys adding the rafters onto the building. Uh, we were just talking about that the other day, and they were talking about how that was their least favorite job of the many jobs that they did to build the cottage. And then the last story of the year was our recent vacation to Hawaii. And those are sort of like the big four stories of the year. And when you're doing a highlights layout like this, sometimes it's tough to come up with you know, whoa, boy, what were the four biggest stories? But honestly, it wasn't hard for me to pick. These definitely were four big stories. You know, the baby and the cottage themselves really consumed most <laughs> of 2022 for us as a family. And um, I just, we had such a great year. And I, I was just filled with gratitude when I created this layout. I love finishing off the year with a project like this. So I really love how that looked. I think it looks good. And what I'm going to do now is take some of the chipboard from Vicky's collection from Warm Wishes and add these little bits of snowflakes in. It's not a Christmas themed layout. Um, it's not even really a winter themed layout, but it is an end of the year layout that I created in December. And so I think it's perfectly apropos to use some uh, icons that might be winter themed. I was totally fine with that. And I love the color scheme. Really fun and festive. And I just really love how this layout turned out. I hope you guys 
enjoyed this. I hope you are inspired to come up with some ideas for creating a highlights layout for the end of your year, for the end of 22, 2022. There were so many great things about the year, so many memorable things, and I love documenting these memories so much. So that's my project for today, and that's episode number 21 of Tried, Trendy, and True. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to go over and check out the blog. Thanks so much. I will see you soon. Have have a happy holiday season, friends. Bye-bye.